Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be installing a backsplash on this kitchen wall and we will be using panty tiles and we are installing the backsplash all the way to the ceiling. So stay tuned and hopefully you'll find it useful. These are the panty tiles we'll be using today to do the window uh, backsplash around the window and uh, like any other mosaic tile the panty tiles come with this mesh backing where all the panty tiles are stuck to. That makes the tiling easier and easier to handle the sheet of uh, tile. Now with panty tiles, there's two ways to install the tile. You can either go this way, uh, where the panties are basically horizontal lines, one on top of the other. Um, the other way you can install them is this way, where the panty tiles are going vertically in a straight line up and down. Now it's a personal choice. Some people prefer it this way. So when you start from where the tile meets the cabinet, you get a nice clean edge. That only works if you're gonna start from the cabinet, work your way to the left. Now for us, we're gonna be installing with the penny tiles going horizontally. What that means is we have to cut the last row of the sheet of pair, sheet of tiles in half and what that will do is when the tile meets the countertop it'll be a straight edge and it means there's less grout where the tile meets the countertop again if you are installing it this way you still have to cut the tiles in half however you'll only be cutting every other tile in half what we will be doing is installing these tiles from the middle of the window and then work our way to the right and then work our way to the left. And that should give us an even cut on both sides of the window. Let's get started. I'll show you a couple of ways to cut the tile sheets. First method is to take the tile sheet with blue tape that stops the tiles from moving. And then I'm gonna mark it where I wanna make the cut. Again, I'm gonna make the cut halfway through the penny tile. Just mark it and then take it to the wet saw. This is an old wet saw and the water pump has broken on this one so I'll have to replace it soon. However, I just want to show you how to make the cut. If you don't have a wet saw, you can always wrap one from Home Depot or Lowe's. It makes the job go a lot faster and a lot easier. As you can see, it gives you a nice clean cut. And method two is to leave the tiles in the case itself and then just cut it on the wet saw. Again, the tile saw does a good job in cutting the tiles, uh, penny tiles in half. And I'm happy with that. You will also need to cut individual tiles in half. And you'll have to use a tile nipper for that. Just cut it about a third of the way into the tile and snap it in half. Gives you a nice clean cut. Like I said, we're going to start tiling from the middle of the window and work our way to the right and then work our way to the left. I made a mark where the center is. Uh, the reason for doing it from the center and working your way outwards is you will get a nice even cut on both sides of the window and that's going to look nice. The other thing I've done is went ahead and cut all the pieces I need for the backsplash under the window and went ahead and tagged them as well. The reason for tagging them is not all of these. There's a slight variation as you go across the window and um, they're not all the same. So I've tagged them. The last thing you want to do is put the tin set on and then try and figure out which goes where. And you don't want to get confused at that point in time. So the tagging will help the process go smoothly. Now, basically this tile will go here the next one will go there 
And if I can show you on the countertop, the tiles are offset. Or if they're not offset, you've got to make them offset by just taking one of the tiles off, the every other tile off. And then when they come together, uh, they'll look like it's a one piece. All right, let's get started. I'll be using this pre-mixed T160 tile adhesive. Usually I don't use pre-mixed uh, tile tin set. It's just a personal choice. However, in this case, because they we're not dealing with wet area, uh, this will be just fine and it should last a long time. Based on the tiles that you're using, make sure you select the correct V-notch trowel. For penny tiles, quarter inch by 3 16th inch V-notch trowel will work just okay. But read the instructions on your tiles before you apply the tin set. So I'm putting the cut side of the tile sheet on top of the countertop and there is a little small gap there um, for the grout and same thing for under the windowsill I left a little bit of gap there as well and um, again you don't want it too tight. After the first tile sheet has been installed you're ready to install the second tile sheet next to it. The important thing here is to make sure that the spacing between the tile sheets is consistent. You don't want it too far apart and you don't want it too narrow as well. I'm also using a grout float to depress the tiles a little bit, not too much. And again, that is to make sure that everything is even and uh, level. You may find some squeeze out, which is normal for penny tiles or any mosaic tiles. If you do get that, then let the tin set sit for a while and then come back and clean it out with a small screwdriver or toothpick before the tin set gets hard. So I'm going to show you how I tackle the tiling around the electrical receptacles. I'm going to mark the left and right hand side of the receptacle on the back of the tile sheet first. And here's a pro tip, you can use the straight edge on the trowel to mark out where you want to make the cuts. And here's where I'm going to use the tile nippers to cut the tiles up to the line. You don't have to be too accurate here. Uh, most of it will be covered by the switch plate. Again, some of the cuts that I made on the uh, penny tiles weren't very accurate, but that's okay. Most of it will be hidden by the switch plate. Just doing a quick test on the switch plate to see how it looks before we move on. Every now and then I check for level and plumb just to make sure we're not veering off too far because we are going around the window. 
and when we meet the other end we want to make sure we match up perfectly and there isn't any misalignment at this point I'm gonna stop talking for a little bit and let you enjoy the video While tiling may look difficult, it's not really difficult. You just have to plan it and prep for it. Those are two critical things that you have to do. And uh, the right tools. If you don't have the right tools, go and rent the tools. And if you haven't tiled before, just do it in small sections until you get used to it. So as you can see uh, we are about to meet the other side of the circle and this is where I was saying uh, we want to make sure that we meet perfectly. With all the tiling done and based on the type of adhesive that you used usually you have to wait 24 hours or a day and a half before you can start grouting and before you grout make sure all the tile surfaces are clean with a damp uh, sponge and any squeeze out you had make sure that's cleaned up as well I'm going to be using sanded grout which is grey in colour and I think that's going to look nice with the tiles I'm using when mixing the grout please read the instructions on the grout that you're using you don't want the grout to be too thin and you don't want it too thick either you want to apply the grout using the grout flow you want to hold the grout flow at a 45 degree angle and really squeeze the grout into the tile. If you're doing the job by yourself, a piece of advice is to do the grouting in small sections. Because you don't want the grout to sit on the tile for too long, read the instructions on the grout that you're using and it will tell you how long to wait before you can start wiping it off from the tile. Once you've waited the required amount of time for the ground, you're ready to wipe it off the surface of the tiles. Use a damp sponge, use both sides of the sponge. Don't get frustrated, it's a long slow process, but the end result is going to be something gorgeous. This was a long video so if you stayed till the end I appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something new today and uh, as always if you haven't please subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.